that you know they're not accustomed to or one of their weaknesses. And we see that to them right here. Yeah, and we'll have to see how that works out for them. But right now, I'm really liking the setup. And I think it should make things very difficult for Rosewill. I mean, they they have kind of a lane disadvantage, um, you know, through and through. We have the Nocturne ganking potential versus Mundo. And Mundo is obviously very strong at, you know, controlling the jungle and whatnot. But because he doesn't have the same ganking presence as Nocturne, because, you know, you look at these lanes, uh, what's the primary lane that you want to gank? Well, it's going to be TF mid. Yep. TF mid... Mundo probably doesn't have enough of an uh, engage in order to get into TF. TF is primarily going to sit back mid and be defensive, but we'll have to see. Livingston does see all of CLG coming in, so they have good vision, and they could maybe get the jump on them right now as CLG comes and tries to invade that blue. And TMS also put the lay waste in the bush just to make sure they, hey man, we know you're here. You might, you might want to consider backing off from this one. So, but you know, we see them. He's like, okay, that bush didn't work. Let's try the other side. Let's try and go for an evade on red. And very unfortunate, Rosewell just walks out just in time as they in make their invade in. Just you know, a little bit of unfortunate timing. Not you know, not really a whole lot you can do about that. It's just it's it's, it's just a, a you know, very unfortunate. That's all. That's all it is to it. Yeah. And now Rosewell actually moving into this top lane. Oh, I hope they're not doing what I think they're doing because right now CLG is grouping up to steal this red. They're hoping they're going to get an invade, uh, invade, but Rose will. Oh, maybe they're just going in for the blue. So neither team really knows where the other is. I was wondering if maybe they would come into the top bush and maybe leave uh, their support up there uh, to try and get a quick kill onto Big Fat. But they're going to try and invade their own blue. There's not really anyone there, so yeah, they they're going to be successful, I guess. Um, but in the meantime, <laughs> CLG going to steal these wraiths and going to steal the red as well. So a nice little quick advantage for St. Vicious, and uh, that could turn into some aggressive ganks as the game progresses, or, you know, maybe even shut down Mundo a little bit. The concern is CLG didn't drop a ward at their own red, so it opens up the opportunity for Mundo to invade and steal the red if he decides, but I think right now they they know that Rosewill is scared. Rosewill is staring mm -hmm. into the eyes of CLG, this, you know, demonic beast of lol kind of thing, <laughs> um, and they're like, okay, well, Mundo we would normally want to invade, but this is CLG, so maybe we won't. We'll have to see, um, you know, whether or not he goes for it. But it looks like he may actually be wandering top instead. We got the blue buff. Are we, uh, we are level two. Did we grab the cleaver uh, second? No, we're actually, now we are going to be going on in to grab the red. So, you know, they took our stuff. We're going to take their stuff. Livingston, now the question is, can he be able to take down the red quick enough? And more than likely, he will we have to pop a potion or two just to make sure that he's pretty healthy doing so. And uh, with that, you know, successful steal. So both junglers, both buffs. Not, you know, it's like they, we did get the invade in, but it's still, you know, the results are minimal. So we pop the potion. Livius is now making a presence top lane. Let's see if we can't get. We got the cleaver here on Big Fat. Can we get the damage we need? We did not have the uh, ignite go down from Espara. So we were like, you know, we're happy with the harass we got. He's not sustaining quite yet. He does. It's. It's. He's gonna be. It's gonna be a while till he has his revolver. But. We do have Livingston back in the tri-bush. See, maybe if we can go in for round two. And in the meantime, Saint going to come down and steal these race. He knows that Mundo is up top. Uh, Rumble going to be playing very defensively, but here we have in. an engage once again. Can we get and a cleaver again? Yes, out. we got it. Can we get? We do have a. Uh, we do have flash available from Big Fat, but he's not. The, he's not burning it. Actually, now the, the damage output not sufficient from Rosewell to get the kill they need top. Yeah, and so unfortunately, I'm a little bit surprised by the play by Big Fat here. So he knows, okay, Mundo is going for the blue. They went for the red. He wasn't there, so he's going to go for the blue. Naturally, you're going to expect Mundo to then go after the red. And the thing is, uh, if Nocturne goes for his blue first, then Mundo has the speed advantage to take the red. If Mo Nocturne is at their red, obviously he's not going to get back in time. Right. So it's a good decision for Mundo to take the red. As a result, it means he's going to be coming top. Well, Big Fat right off the start of the lane, rather than playing defensively and allowing the creeps to push back to his tower, he came right up and you know started attacking the creeps, and uh, as a result, pushed the lane up to Malphite's tower, and because Rumble is so weak early, the result is that Malphite was able to sit back and play defensively, allow it to push into him, and put Big Fat into a dangerous situation. And Malphite's having a little bit of trouble farming up top lane, but we do have Livingston back here. We got the cleaver, double lift will be actually going down to this gank, so first blood does go to Rosewell, and that should definitely make up for a lot of time that Mundo was up top lane. While he was trying to get that gank on Big Fat, he was not farming, he was not getting XP, but now things have equalized a little bit. But yeah, granted, actually, yeah, he's still behind though, he's still a little bit behind. 
Yeah, we have a really nice position for, you know, Roseville right now. Not only with that first blood, but, um, you know, mid should be a pretty safe farming lane. It's going to be really tough for them to harass down Karthus. And then top lane is, you know, just in the position that they want. Now, Big Fat should be in control now with the Malphite out of that mana. Uh, but even so, you know, he's out of position. Actually, we see Livingston going to be catching Big St. Uh, Vicious, Saint Vicious here, get and he will yeah. be able to get the cleave. There's the slow, actually, from TMS, so they're chasing him down. The flash from St. Vicious, and there's the yellow card onto Livingston to try and get him out of there. But with the AoE from Karthus, they should be able to pick up this kill, and now the rest of the team is in pursuit. We have the cleave, and then actually backing out of there. Hotshot able to pick up that quick kill, but with the stun, they do grab it. So even though Mundo does go down, uh, it is a two-for-one exchange for Rosewill right now. TMS grab and the best part of that, he did get the kill credit for both of those. So quick double kill. He's got a pretty good, uh, pretty fat wallet right about now. So I'm, he should have enough for, uh, or at least be very well on his way to an early catalyst as well. But uh, we see that the uh, harass continues up top lane. And Espara, dis despite being in the face of so much fire, quite, quite literally fire from Big Fat LP's rumble, He's still able to effectively farm. He's still, you know, we're, we're keeping even. We went back. We got a Doran's Ring, Mana Pot. We want to keep our Mana Pool up. We want to have that regen, take it back with us so we can just stay in the lane a little while longer. Yeah, and so right now, because of the excellent timing of Malphite's back, he did have uh, Big Fat pushed up to the tower. And so Big Fat doesn't really have a good opportunity to recall. So Big Fat has one of two options. One, I can try and push Malphite into, under the tower. And that's what he wants. He wants to push his creeps under the tower so that when he gets back from his recall, uh, they'll be back on his side. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough time to do it. So as a result, he just wants to hold the creeps here. But this gives uh, Malphite an opportunity to come into this lane while Big Fat is low and while Big Fat doesn't have any items and just bully him around, which means that he's going to be able to deny uh, Big Fat some experience when Big Fat does fight finally go back from uh, from lane and we actually have the level six versus level six but unfortunately rumble is very low and there's the flash or the ultimate coming in with the ignite big fat going to flash out but the, uh, Karthus, the Karthus ultimate ult. is going to be able to pick up that kill very nice 3-0 Karthus is always a good thing he's got his catalyst too is good on him and you know what I hope I hope that Chowster comes back soon man because uh, things are things are not going very well and things are actually starting to spiral out pretty quickly here and that all started with, you know, the teleport from Malphite. Uh, Big Fat, he wasn't able to get the quite the timing that he wanted to on leaving lane. And so because he wasn't able to leave lane, a quick advantage for Malphite. And you can't let Malphite have that killing potential. We see some nice bursts going down onto Double Lift here. He's going to turn back onto Judge Reinhold. Now they are underneath the towers, so they don't want to take too much damage here. They obviously understand they can't engage. But we actually have TF porting onto Rakiri. There is the stun and the wild cards. He is chasing, and they will maybe be able to pick this kill. Who knows? Actually, uh, Mundo coming down as well as Karthus, so they will have to back out now. So uh, no, you know, kill exchange, unfortunately, for them there. And so a 4-1 advantage still for Rosewill. And, hopefully, and thankfully, Chester is now back, so we can see Double Lift get a little bit more control back into the bot lane. Well, Big Fat trying to get some damage down as far as he goes in, gets rid of the shield, backs out. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what you, you're, you're cooldown dependent with yeah. Rumble, and so he knew he bursted down the shield. Now all he needs to do is keep up constant damage to not allow Rumble to regen that shield. Unfortunately, uh, the Malphite, you know, that Q is doing pretty well, and Malphite does have a little bit of ability power with that Doran's. It gives him the mana regen that he needs along with some health, and he's just slowly wearing down Big Fat here. So even though yep. it seemed like it would be a lane which would be to Rumble's advantage, he's very successful. In the meantime, they are trying to see if they can get an engage onto TMS here. He is backing off, so no such luck yep. um, and we'll see whether or not you know CLG tries to pressure that dragon now normally normally you would see a rumble start getting those amplifying tombs we all work up and we want to try and get our revolver ASAP for that spell vamp but you see here Big Fat has actually gone for the Merc Treads we've actually recognized that you know Malphite is capable of dishing out quite a bit of damage plus we also want to get rid of the slow we want to be a little bit more mobile so it's a it's a little bit of a defensive purchase by big fat just to make sure that he can stay in lane and still farm as opposed to being offensive and trying to trying to go in for the kill but we see here he's pushed out once again we got the malphite ult coming in livingston is here trying to get the cleaver off and all that damage he's stuck in the middle of the lane no he doesn't really have very many options on where to retreat and tms is here big fat he recognizes his fate and Aspara goes up and gets that kill. But in the meantime, 
We do have Nocturne, and we do have TF. St. Vicious and Hotshot, they saw, hey, they got three guys up top lane. Let's push mid. Let's get some damage on that tower. It's going to get to at least half, but they know Karthus is here. Are they going to back out? No, they were, they were almost committing there, but it's going to barely get out. Not unscathed, though. Cleaver, ooh, barely missed St. Vicious. Oh, but we actually have the movement speed from Livingston. He's going to try and chase this down. We'll get the Cleaver onto TF. The Flash force from Hotshot, and he's actually oh. going to Flash as well. Uh, flash and then the Cleaver, but he's going down very quickly. Karthus coming in as well. Mundo does go down, but Hotshot should drop here. And now St. Vicious in a lot of trouble because Tarek gets the stun, and the nice. rest of the team does come. So 7-2, two, uh, two for one ex exchange, and they actually have a good opportunity to take uh, Dragon here if they decide to, uh, but they're not actually going to go for it. So... Um, a little bit surprised there, but without Mundo for the smite, you know, there is a concern about double lift and Chalster just having a lot of burst damage, maybe picking up a quick kill on Dekarthus. Yeah, but yeah, now, cool get Karthus now. Four, zero, and one. Rod of Ages. Ten minutes into the game. Fantastic. Early purchase. That thing is going to be perfectly well up and farmed to maximum capacity at the 20 minute mark. Very well timed in the fact that he has all the kills and the farm to support that early purchase. Speaks to how how far ahead Karthus is now against <laughs> against Hotshot in the mid. Hotshot, he's got his two Doran's rings, he's got his Sheen. TF, he you know, one of his core items though, as an AP.